Sure. Chest x-rays are going to be the bulk of the uh, procedures that you're going to be doing in radiology. Again, chest x-rays are done for a multitude of things, including pre-ops, uh, also trauma and pathology. Uh, I think we left off <coughs> last week why we did it at 72 inches. Mm -hmm. Okay, why do we do it at 72 instead of 40? To get the <coughs> magnification of the heart. Okay, because of the heart. Okay, so um, the doctors primarily, in, uh, in addition to the lungs, are looking at heart size. Heart size can be telltale if the patient's going any, uh, experiencing any type of cardiac pathology, especially cardiomegaly. Um, so we do everything for chest x-rays as great a distance as possible. If the patient was on a table, will you be able to achieve that 72 inches? No. If they were on a gurney or on a bed, will you be able to achieve those 72 inches? Mm -hmm. All right. So again, the greater that you, you can extend your SID, the better. So if you're on the table, if you're on the bed or a gurney, you may not get that 72 inches, but you want to max it out as much as possible to minimize heart size. Okay. Uh, not only that, but we also know that magnification is going to cause not only shape distortion, but it's also going to change the resolution of the image, right? Because the larger the image, you start to lose resolution and detail. I think we talked about this before. It's kind of like when you, you know, you take your phone, you take a picture, you want to look at the picture, and then you're trying to increase the size of it with your fingers, right? What happens to the image? It gets very blurry. So same thing happens in, in radiology. So any magnification will increase resolution. Okay. Any questions here? All right. So radiograph criteria. Your basic views for chest X-ray is going to be AP or PA and a lateral. First we'll talk about the AP, or the AP and PA. So your criteria here is making sure that the patient does, isn't rotated for any of these projections. So to evaluate for rotation, we're going to assess the SC joints, for one. We'll talk about that on the next slide. We want to get the chin out of the way. And I think I also alluded uh, with patients who have uh, voluptuous pendulous breast assists. Okay, we need to get those out of the way because fresh shadow can also deter the, the radiographic image. Okay, but we need to get the chin out of the way, no rotation. Um, the purpose of them putting their arms on their side, like so, when we do a chest x ray, we normally don't have them put their arms by their side, we have them put them up here on their waist and roll the shoulders forward. What is the purpose of rolling the shoulders forward? In my OID. Okay. We're trying to get something out of the way. We're trying to draw it off to the side. Scapula. Scapula, okay? Good job, man. Good job. Extra credit. So arms, hands here by the waist, shoulders roll forward, draws the scapula towards the, the, the lateral, lateral sides. All right, so to evaluate for rotation, we're going to look for the distance uh, from your mid-sagittal plane. And in the mid-sagittal plane, you have your sternum. And the distance between the sternum or mid-sagittal plane to the, uh, uh, the sternal end of the clavicle. Okay. So here we have a perfect example of no rotation. Over here, it's slightly rotated. You have the left SC joint that's a little bit more medial, but then you have the right SC joint that's a little bit more towards the side. Now, this may also be due to the patient's condition, so there's nothing you can do about that. All right, so you may have some rotation, as long as it's not grossly rotated. So would this be acceptable? Yes. yes. It's still acceptable. So we have some rotation, but it is acceptable. There's no need for you guys to shoot this x-ray again. Now, for a properly inflated chest x-ray, okay, good inspiration on a second breath, how many sets of Posterior ribs should you see? Ten. You guys ten. remember that? It should be ten. So let's count them. Do we we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten? Are we good? Mm -hmm. All right. So properly inflated chest X-ray should demonstrate at least ten posterior ribs. Okay. Any questions? <clears throat> okay. For lateral, we have a left and a right side, correct? Yes? Okay, we got two sides. So if we're doing a lateral chest, 
Which one would we do, a left or a right lateral? Left. 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 Why? Because the heart's closer. Okay, the apex of the heart, okay, is closer to the left side, so we're going to place the apex closer to the image receptor to minimize any type of magnification. So the left side is going to be pressed up against the image receptor, arms up and out of the way. Okay, arms up and out of the way. Chin up and out of the way. To, to demonstrate no rotation on a chest, lateral chest, what we're looking for here is we're looking for one set of posterior ribs. The posterior ribs should be superimposed. You should only see one set. Okay, one set of posterior ribs. Now, I'm going to jump to the next slide here. This is a good lateral chest x-ray because you only see one set of posterior ribs. Here, you see two sets. Okay? So you have rotation here. Now, there is a limitation or, or uh, I'm sorry, um, a margin of error that you may have some rotation, but if it's grossly, again, rotated, oh, it has to be done again. So this margin of error is that if it's greater than one centimeters, <laughs> one centimeters between the two sets, you have to do it again, okay? It's not acceptable. Now, how do you determine, how do you determine one centimeter? Measuring tape. Okay. Measuring tape. <laughs> It's a thumb roll. Okay, it's your thumb roll. So you place your thumb. This is a little bit magnified, but what you would do is on a radiograph on your display screen, you would place your thumb between the two. If it's greater than the width of your thumb, again, Alex, most thumbs, okay? Ken, most thumbs. <laughs> if it's greater than the width of your thumb, then it may need to be repeated again. Do not do it until the either your quality control technologist or the radiologist says you know it needs to be done again. All right. So don't go upon yourself and say you know I'm going to shoot it again. Check first. Okay. Depending on what we're looking for, the radiologist may say oh you know it's okay. Let's let's just keep it. But for the most part, they'll have you repeat it. Okay. So does everybody see the two sets of posterior ribs? Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. So let's go back over here. Um, when you're doing also a lateral chest, you place the patient left side up against the board. Now it says here, no tilt. What that means with no tilt is some of us may be broader shoulder. So when you're putting your chest up on the board, you don't press your hip up against the board either. So now that your hip and chest is up on the image receptor, they still have to remain perpendicular. You understand what I'm saying? So when they're leaning up on the board, okay, don't press their hip up against that because now you're gonna create tilt. Have them straight, stand up straight upright. Even if they have very broad shoulders, their shoulder and upper chest may be up against the IR, but their mid thorax may, may have some OID. That's okay. Okay, you wanna maintain uh, the patient being straight and perpendicular with the image receptor. See, in this case here, it's a little bit small on the waist. We don't want him to press his waist up against the image receptor. They have to stay and remain upright. Okay? Everybody got this? Okay. Arms out of the way. We don't want the arms too low. You may have some patients who are unable to raise their arm up if they're weak, um, or they just have the inability to do that. We want to somehow get the arms out of the way. This does not satisfy that criteria. This does not satisfy the criteria, okay? We needed to get it up, out of view of the thorax. Even if you have it like this, we still want to want to make sure that there's any extra muscle hanging in the view. Okay, because this can show up on the x-ray. Get it up and out of the way. Okay, central rate location. Where's the central rate directed? At what level? 
level of T7. T7 is mythorax. T7 is mythorax. Okay? To get to T7, we talked about this last week. How many inches from the jugular notch? Three to AP. Okay? How many inches from the jugular notch? Three to four inches. So it's not this, it's just the this. Oh. Yeah. The PA okay. is this one, right? Yeah. So this is the, the width of your fist on an average size fist. That will get you to approximately T7. Now what about if it was PA? Now you're doing the shock. Okay. Shock up, but what's your landmark? Okay, vertebral prominence. The vertebral prominence of C7. Okay, that's where you do the shaka. Okay, eight inches for males, seven inches for females. <laughs> Adjust accordingly. Bless you. All right. Um, here it says equal collimation should be visible on upper and lower margins. Center ray is too low on the right image. Okay, in other words, it's too low because now we're getting too much abdomen in here. Mm. Okay, it needs to be up a little higher. Uh, it's not centered to the lungs, and abdominal area is not collimated. All right. How do we, how do we like uh, this chest section on the left? <coughs> First of all, do we have enough air in the lungs? Okay, I can just look at it right now, and I can tell you there's not 10 sets of posterior ribs in there. Mm -hmm. You can just look at it. The lungs look very short. Okay, very short. The other thing too is a good chest x-ray, you need to be able to see through the heart. You guys got that? Mm -hmm. And a good chest x-ray, you should be able to see through the heart or behind the heart. So that way we can evaluate the lung that's being superimposed by the heart. The other thing that you should also see is some thoracic spine. Okay? We can't see behind the heart there, nor can we see the thoracic spine behind the heart. So is it that the KV was too low, you think? Because the KV was probably too low. Okay? And here's, here's kind of the, <clears throat> the, um, the compromise. You want to use high KV to penetrate through the heart to see thoracic and also behind the heart, but you don't want to do it too much where your image becomes too dark. Now for a chest x-ray, what type of contrast are we looking for here? So you've got your ribs, you've got your chest, uh, sorry, you've got your lungs, which is air filled, you've got your heart muscle, you've got your vascular markings. Low contrast. Okay. There's a lot of parts to the chest, right? So we want low contrast, which means what? More or less grace? More. More, More grace. Okay. So we want something that's low contrast, long scale. Remember your terms? Mm -hmm. Low contrast, long scale, which means more grays. All right, so your topical uh, landmarks here again. So you either got your jugular notch or your vertebral prominence of C7. 67, uh, 78 inches below the prominence will get you at the level of T7, which is uh, mid thorax. Um, also in your book, it says here that you can use the inferior margins of your scapula. The inferior margins of your scapula can also be used to find T7. Okay? So that's where your central is directed. Now, here are some other things that you can do. I can either put my central ray at the level of T7, or if you know where the top margin is of your image receptor, Put the top of your image receptor on the palpable area of the vertebral prominence of C7. Because if you look here, the lungs, the apex of the lungs is not going to go past C7. That is your upper border. So if you place your edge of your image receptor right at the top of this border, you should be okay. So you're saying the, the light field, right? Should the light be. field, right. So if you call me, if you set up your light field to a seven, um, 14 by 17 crosswise, the top of your light field will be right there, slightly above the uh, vertebral prominence. Okay, so you have these other ways to find T7. <laughs> these are just a couple of them. All right. <clears throat> so here we use the 
you know, the hang loose, chaka bra. Uh, vertebral prominence, extend your thumb and your pinky. They'll, pro they'll take you approximately seven eight, seven, eight inches below the vertebral prominence, or it also said, place your central ray right below where the scapula is located. So it'll take you approximately there. Okay? <coughs> Any questions? <clears throat> okay. So again, just an example here, eight inches spread. You can also use it with the same finger here, but instead of right at the spot here, you want to go up just a little bit higher because, well, with women for some reason, uh, they're a lot shorter with their with the thorax. Okay, so approximately seven inches for females. All right. Top of the landmark for an AB chest, three to four inches below the jugular notch, and that should be the width, should be the width of your fist. Okay? Or same thing applies here. Just put the top of your image receptor at the level of the vertebral prominence. Just showing you the, the, the width of four fingers. I just do my thumb. I'm going to do the width of my fist. I have to include my thumb, that's going to be about three to four inches. All right. <coughs> collimation guidelines. Collimate on all four sides. Um, show demonstration of collimation. Now, when you're doing a chest x-ray, there may not be any collimation at all because we're going to use the entire image receptor. So you may have to open up your collimator to the size of the image receptor. But this is also where collimation is important if you do have a smaller size patient. If you have a smaller size patient, you're not going to use the entire uh, width and length of your uh, <coughs> detector or your image receptor. We want collimation because you're using very high KVs and you're going through a very thick body part. Those two in combination will produce a lot of scatter radiation. And what do we know about scatter radiation? It's bad for the image. It's bad for the image, right? Because now you have increased densities, right? That's called fog. So, and then what's going to happen to your contrast? It's going to get lower. It's going to get lower. And then what happens to resolution? Decreases. Decreases resolution. You guys remember all this, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, stop me if you've heard this before. <laughs> okay. So, column all four sides. Make sure that you're not cutting off the APCs. Make sure you're not cutting off the claustrophenic angles. All right. What else do I need to talk about here? Markers. When doing a chest x ray, you will notice here that who's ever doing this chest x-ray placed a right marker on there, which is fine, but get in the habit of using your left marker because you do your PA, then you turn them for your lateral, your left marker is still up there. You don't have to switch it off, right? Mm -hmm. Left side and left lateral, use your left marker. There's nothing wrong with this one, it's just that when I put them on the left lateral, now I have to take my right marker off, off and put my left one off there. It's too time. much work. <laughs> too much work. Okay. <laughs> All right, chest x ray here, is it appropriate? <clears throat> What's our scale of contrast for a chest x ray? Low. Okay, it should be long scale, lots of grays. Is this low contrast or high contrast? High contrast. High contrast. It's too black and white. How about penetration? Can we see? Can we see the <coughs> thoracic spine and can we see behind the heart? No. Okay. Not good. All right. But again, this is where there's the compromise because I didn't use a lot of KV, but look what's happening here to my lungs. Is it, is it burnt out? No. Yeah, let me see over here. It's, it's too dark. You should be able to see lung markings, the branches. Okay, you can't see that there. So I may have to increase my KV, but I also may have to decrease my MA to get you a better image. But again, you guys are so lucky that you have the computers now to figure everything out for you. Oh, Ms. Smith showed us the automatic. Yeah, there's an automatic. Yeah, yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. She's going to have to show yeah. me that. Okay. Really yeah, she's not sharing with me. <laughs> I know, yeah. I heard about it so uh, through cool. other yeah. students. It's nice. Yeah. So she's withholding information. <laughs> <laughs> All right. 
Are we seeing a lot of uh, ribs here? I mean, it looks like we are on the left side, but we're having some issues over here, right? Mm -hmm. Because someone who is healthy, you should be able to see the claustrophenic angles. You can't see it over here. What do you think this is, what do you think is going on here? There's probably some fluid levels, right? Because you should see a sharp point. You can barely see it, it's right about there, but there is some fluid levels that's occurring. This is why we prefer to do chest ray, chest x-rays in an upright position. If you're laying down, you're not gonna see those fluid levels. So we do it in an upright position, okay? All right, other modalities that you can explore in your book. Uh, there are other ways to evaluate <coughs> the, the chest and the heart that includes CT. Uh, some uh, ultrasound, again, limit, limited use. We don't like to use ultra, uh, ultrasound for the chest because ultrasound is not good for very solid materials like bone. So if you're trying to scan the chest, it's gonna, not gonna penetrate bone. That's its limitation. Then we also have nuclear medicine and also MRI uh, as other means of evaluating the chest. Okay? Here's a good one of an MRI. I thought this was a good image, bless you. So here we have a chest x-ray with a very large module in uh, the right chest, chest area. And here we have an MRI that demonstrates the same mass and then here we have a CT also demonstrating the same mass. So these are very good tools to evaluate uh, the chest but also localize the, the nodules. I don't know what this means, radiographic presentation, pathology. <laughs> All right, uh, I can't make anything up. Let's keep on going. Okay. Uh, basic views for a chest, PA, we prefer PA. If you can't do PA, what's the mirror? AP. AP, okay. So if we can't do PA, we can do AP, and then also lateral. Preferably, again, in an upright position. Then we have our special um, views here. We have AP supine or semi-direct, a lateral decubitus to evaluate air and fluid levels for patients who cannot stand up or go in a direct position. We will do a lateral decubitus. Uh, we talked about AP lordotic, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, the whole purpose of the lordotic view is to throw the clavicles over the APCs, okay, to evaluate the APCs. For TB, right? And it's good for evaluating TB, tuberculosis. Then we also have obliques, anterior obliques and posterior obliques. All right, PA chest. PA chest. Patient is prone, facing the image receptor. Chin up and out of the way. Chin up and out of the way. Back of your hands on the hips, shoulders forward to get the scapula to move laterally. Okay. We want to avoid any type of rotation. I need a volunteer. Who's a volunteer? Come on up. You're next. You first. <laughs> All right, so let's say you, you guys are my image receptor, okay? So I'm gonna have my patient place their hand on their hips. I have them roll their shoulders forward. I say, roll your shoulders forward. Now before you do all this, you're, you're telling them what you're gonna do, okay? No touchy-feely without letting them know what you're doing, okay? Roll the shoulders forward. Now as I'm rolling their shoulders forward, chest is up on the board, guess what I'm doing with my fingers? <laughs> Get your mind out of the gutter, oh. okay? What I'm also doing here is I'm rolling her shoulders forward, my finger here, I'm measuring the distance between her shoulder and the image receptor. So my fingers are doing this, uh -huh. okay? So I'm feeling for the image receptor with my fingers. I wanna make sure that there is equal distance from her shoulder to my image receptor. With no rotation, right? With no rotation. So we'll practice okay. that. You're gonna hear a lot, your, your fingernails are gonna hit the image receptors, you're gonna do a lot of this. Click, 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 click. So you're feeling for the distance. Okay, now relax. Now when we're doing a, go ahead. When we're doing a chest <laughs> x-ray, how are we prepping our patients? Removing. Yeah, okay, so how do we prep them for the procedure? 
Okay, so now we're going to get a little bit more specific in directions. We didn't do a lot of that with the extremities. We just say remove your rings and your watches or whatever and roll up your sleeves or roll up your pant leg, right? Now with the chest, for chest x-rays, put them in the dressing room. Here's your gown, Miss Jones. I need you to remove everything from the waist up, including your bra, any type of jewelry or any type of body jewelry. Okay? What else should we ask them to remove? Okay, well, body jewelry. Okay, body jewelry. Oh, piercings, I'm sorry, body jewelry and piercings. Okay, doesn't hurt to ask, uh, tell the patients that now, nowadays because you've even got 60 and 70 year, 70 year olds with some piercings. And hair, you gotta get it up and out of the hair, way. Hair, you gotta get it up and out of the way so if they have long hair, tie it up. Okay, use a tourniquet, if they have a, if they some kind of hair tie, let them use their hair tie. If not, use a tourniquet, use a glove, use something to get it out of the way. Okay, now, so You're now up. I've got, You're up. now I've got Bahar here. And so as I'm setting her up for the chest, six raise shoulders, uh, hands on your waist, shoulders forward, please. Now I'm feeling, whoa. <laughs> Hello, pop now right I'm there. feeling, so I'm feeling for this, but guess what I'm also doing as I'm talking to her? Guess what I'm doing? My hands are so subtle, I'm also feeling to make sure that she doesn't have her bra on. Yeah. So I'm positioning her, but my hands are, are real subtle, and I'm also checking to see, I say, okay, put your chest up on the board. What I'm doing is I'm actually checking to see if she has her bra on. And as I'm doing that, I'm also looking at her neck to make sure she doesn't have any jewelry on. Okay? Two. One thing I can't check is that if she has any type of body piercings. Okay? So it's sure. important that you explain that to your patient that if you have any body jewelry or any type of piercings, I need you to remove them. Okay? All right. Thank you. Subtle movements. Don't let, they, they don't even know what you're doing because it's so subtle. I just check for her bra. I'm also checking to see if she has jewelry on. Okay? All right. <clears throat> Questions so far? Gonadal shielding. Place the gonadal shielding in the path of the primary beam. Okay? So there should be some shielding right here on their backside. <coughs> Hopefully you will have a complete wraparound gonadal shielding, so not only are we protecting them from the primary beam, but we're also protecting them from scatter, scatter radiation coming from the image receptor. High KV, right? Very high KV, thick body part, there's gonna be some scatter radiation, so we kinda need to take that into consideration for patient protection. Okay? Um, so central ray, what is our landmark, palpable landmark? Okay, the keyboard, keyboard prominence is C7, about 78 inches below that. That's going to take you at the level of T7. What you can also do here is again take the top of top light of your image receptor and place it slightly above the level of C7, the vertebral prominence of C7. You can also do that. Or again, use your <coughs> lower scapula border or angle as your marker also for T7. Is this making sense, guys? Mm -hmm. All right. No questions, okay. Entire lungs should be demonstrated uh, with no rotation. For evaluation of no rotation, we're gonna look at the SC joints, okay? In relation to the mid-sagittal plane or your sternum. <clears throat> uh, scapula should be moved out of the way, and you do that by placing the back of their hands on their hip, shoulders forward. Full inspiration. We do it on the second command. So, as part of your script, before you take your chest x-ray, okay, Ms. Jones, I'm gonna have you hold still here for a minute. Uh, in a moment, I'm gonna have you take a deep breath in, and then you're gonna blow it out, and I'm gonna have you take another deep breath in, and on your second breath, Ms. Jones, I want you to hold it for me. Okay, are, you, are we okay? Do you understand? Mm -hmm. Okay, let's go ahead and do this, Ms. Jones. Okay, hold still, don't move. Take a deep breath in. Now, as I'm doing this, I'm giving my commands as I'm walking out the door. Okay? So, take a deep breath in, blow it out. Take another deep breath in, hold it, expose. Okay? So, you can multitask. 
So they're hearing me as I'm walking away. I'm not yelling it from the opposite side of the wall. Take a deep breath in, blow it out. Do it as you're leaving the room. Okay, multitask. 